for all of the hardships of this pandemic, we also know that there have been silver linings and positive outcomes, and I'm honored to get to share and celebrate one of those accomplishments with you today. So as a direct result of this pandemic, the various restructuring needs of the schools to open safely, an emphasis on outdoor learning and reimagining how in-person school time happened, and of course, the financial support from the CARES Act. The district, in partnership with Food Corn Cultivating Community, created two district-employed full-time garden teachers. Um, these two classes at Talbot Community School and East End Community School allowed a pilot year to build off of a decade plus of work in the district around school gardens and food-based education into a full-time class. I'm so excited to go in depth with you today to share with you the successes of this year and really show you for this network how we've built what some people might just think of as garden class to integrate many of the goals of this network and the district that has had great value and impact for our students during such a hard and traumatic year. Um, so as I said, this has been a long time in the making, cultivating and Cultivating Community and Food Corps have had a long standing relationship with the schools to connect kids to healthy food. There are also so many other community partners that have worked with schools over the years to design outdoor classrooms, build gardens, and provide nutrition education. When this network, Food Fuels Learning, formed in 2017, it helped weave and uplift our collective goals and visions together. The School Garden Network, which has really thrived on, under the Food Fuels Learning Action Group model, um, has met monthly for two plus years now, and we continue to work, as Rachel said, to share resources, collaborate, and work together um, to create sustainability for our school garden programs. And we have gone and built the foundation for multiple different models to do this including building resources like Rachel just shared um, for teachers to be able to use the garden spaces during their classroom teaching or other outdoor spaces. Um, we've also laid out a garden coach model, which many schools have already adopted, um, which helps give a stipend for a point person, but is still not a full-time teacher. However, the opportunity that the pandemic presented was really the ultimate opportunity to build out a pilot year and a year-long curriculum and program. Um, I will note that more than two schools were interested in the special for this year, but the groundwork that Food Corps had laid at East End and Talbot made the quick implementation possible for these two positions um, this year. So I'm going to hand it over to Anna Franceschetti, who is one of our district hired garden teachers, to tell you exactly a little bit more about how this was implemented this year. Well, thank you, Lily. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm Anna Franceschetti, and I'm a garden specialist this year at Talbot Elementary School. And so I'm just going to dive into a few details about the implementation of our garden programming this year. So both Talbot and East End schools have a full-time garden ed tech um, that were hired on in September, as well as a food court member. Um, and these um, two roles are partnering together um, to roll out the garden programming. Um, so we have a few of the members um, of our team, garden team on this call. So um, Rachel is here, who, if you can wave, that'd be awesome for people to see you. Um, and she is the food corps member over at East End. And we have Lily Kendall, who is the food corps member at Talbot. If you could give a wave. Thank you, Lily. And then Mika couldn't join us tonight, but um, she is the ed tech at East End. Um, and so the food corps members have been working hard to develop and create um, curriculum for this garden special. Um, and that each team is, school team is working together to implement them. Um, and so our curriculum is tied to next generation science standards and covers a broad range of topics um, from growing food to food systems to nutrition. Um, so our first two units of the year were um, held almost exclusively in the garden, which is really exciting. Um, and they covered topics such as plant parts, plant life cycle, decomposition, and soil science. 
Um, and since it's gotten colder and the change of seasons, we've moved our classes indoors um, and shifted our focus to learning about food systems and nutrition. Um, and though we're inside, our lessons are still, um, we still have had a focus on being very hands-on and interactive, um, which has been really great and keeps the interest strong among students. Um, so some of the topics we've been exploring in the indoor units um, include the pathway our food takes to our plate, the harvest of the month program and local foods, um, climate and foods from around the world, nutrients and how they fuel our bodies, as well as the importance of eating balanced meals. Um, and so moving forward, we will return to the garden when it is warmer out and prepare it for spring and plan lessons around planting, pollination, photosynthesis, um, and sharing the harvest. And so that is just a quick rundown of what we um, have been doing and what we plan to do moving forward. And now Lily will show a video clip um, of one of our garden classes this fall during our decomposition unit. And I hope that you'll notice how um, connected our garden special is to both the outdoors and our science-based education. So Lily, well, you can go ahead and play that now. Eat signs of decomposition and decomposers in our garden. Oh, look, what did I find here? Okay. A worm. Oh, can I see? What, is, what does a worm do? It decomposes. It eats decomposed things. Yeah. And what are, what's happening? There's water in there? Are they, are they What do you think that is a sign of? I saw another rolling pony somewhere. Where? It was trying to eat the wood, but it didn't roll up. Can anyone review? Tell me what decomposing means. Awesome. So now that you've gotten a little sneak peek into what it looks like on the ground of the garden and food sciences special, I am going to dive into this visual that we've created to help illustrate how many goals we've weaved together in this class. So I really want to be illustrating that this is much more than teaching kids outside in the garden, while that is the core and such a beautiful piece of it. Um, it really inherently incorporates a lot of different aspects. So we've made this matrix with the wonderful help of Mariah Brown, a former Food Corps member who I believe is on this call. And it was really a community collaborated process. So what you're seeing here is on the top column, we've listed different district initiatives. So curriculum is obviously at the core of what is most important to serving students. Outdoor learning, which was invested in as a part of a safe reopening for schools during the pandemic, um, is a district initiative now, but there's also been a lot of desire from many to continue the integration beyond this pandemic. You all will recognize many of the Food Fields Learning Network goals, um, which have been supported by Javier since its inception. And lastly, we have the wellness policy, which is mandated by the government to all schools that participate in the National School Lunch Program. And then on this side, you'll see all of the Portland Promise um, values and goals, which we're all pretty familiar with. And in the middle are all the ways in which these goals and values intersect and are accomplished through the Garden and Food Sciences Special. We've used a nice rainbow of colors here as one way to show you the intersectionality and weaving together of these goals. And although we have managed to fit them into little boxes and categories here, the reality is that many of them mesh and overlap in many ways. Um, in the boxes, you will see that many of them have check marks. And this indicates that it is a part of this year's pilot which of course can always be strengthened, but we believe we have ingrained these aspects into the structure this year. The few boxes that um, don't have check marks right now 
or what we see as a potential that could be worked into this position if it is sustained beyond this year. So that really has to do with different liaison positions or support roles to different goals. So as you're taking this in, I'm going to go a little deeper dive into what some of these phrases mean, and I'll just go along the achievement column here. So in this first box, we see the intersection of achievement and curriculum, which are two goals of the district. Um, we are really centering next gen science standards in this special, which is in the title. And we've been doing this through partnership with the district STEM coordinator, Brooke Teller. Um, however, the special also incorporates things like literacy and language, math, cultural and world studies, and place-based studies. And I'll just mention that we do aspire to continue to collaborate with Fiona and the Wabanaki vertical team to integrate the curriculum units that they're currently working on to see what can be taught through school gardens as appropriate. Um, I said that these don't all fit into perfect boxes. So just one thing I wanna show is, for instance, language skills is of course important to achievement. And it's also an equity issue in the classroom. So here we see that inclusive communication is um, kind of inherent to our garden program. Um, and this is because our garden classroom inherently has various modes of inclusive communication. It naturally incorporates many scaffolded language tools, such as real life hands-on examples and visuals, um, which is really helpful for those who are English, who are building their English language skills. Um, and the garden also provides many ways for students to participate meaningfully beyond verbal communication. So now coming from achievement over to outdoor learning and the intersection of those two, um, we see that through the garden special, students build perseverance and confidence as learners. And some examples of this are that it's hands-on experiential learning, they're using their five senses and observation skills, and they're receiving direct feedback from their surroundings. The intersection of food fuels learning and achievement um, shows that this mode of education incorporates learning beyond the traditional core subjects through teaching through the modality of food based education. So this it um, happens by including them, them being the students in the process of growing and preparing food, trying new things and building a direct connection to the cafeteria and their school meals through a class in school and leading them to become more food literate to make the best choices for themselves. And lastly, coming all the way over here to wellness and achievement, we can see how this all comes together um, in giving students the tools they need for healthy eating, which is directly linked to their ability to learn. They are introduced to exactly how and why nutrients help their bodies. And we have really built in to maintain a poverty informed, culturally appropriate and body positivity lens, which also intersects with whole student inequity. Um, so this matrix is beautiful and I hope that you can start to see how it really weaves together many of our collective community and district goals. We have put together another video to help illustrate this. And in this video, you will see um, some titles before some of the clips. And I think you'll notice that, as I said, while it does address those things, it's probably going above and beyond and incorporating other parts of the matrix as well. Um, so I hope you all enjoy this. brings all our students together with this space and all can learn different culture here because observing just like all our plants, all our different plants, making that connection. Oh, this plant only grows in Maine and how much geography they will learn of plants that are grown only in Maine. No, this is also come from Africa or Asia because we have all these diversity in our school.
Now blueberries are grown in Maine. In Maine. With potato. <laughs> Another kind of one. Where's your favorite from? From Sudan. From Sudan. So Sudan, we found it. No, French is also like similar. Lie. We establish that connection. We connect them to where they are from. That's another sense you can use. Yeah, it does. What are other senses you can use? What did you do for the first time today? Touched the worm. So you've never touched a worm before? Did you like it? <laughs> I touched it with my full hands. I'm full hands. It was my first time too. It was your first time touching a worm? Yeah. Your writing time, kids have those experiences that then they can write about. It ties into both writing, science. Um, in the past, we've also done a little math activity with counting pumpkin seeds. So we can tie it in in so many different ways. It's, it's been a, a wonderful experience for my first grade students. Remember those five fabulous things our plants need to grow? Mm -hmm. What were what were they? Sunlight, Sunlight soil, soil, water, water and wind. Oh, air. air, and what do they need? Is this a school space? I'm going to put the ruler next to where the last garlic plant was planted, and I'm going to find the six because our plants need to be how many inches apart? Six. six. So I'm going to find the six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to know that that's where I need to plant my garlic so that it has plenty of space to grow. There's a sign right here that says what it is. Mint. Mint. Yeah, it's mint. 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 Especially I have one kid who was uh, have a hard time in the classroom to start when when it's time to go for gardening he was the top to line up and going to garden and when he comes back especially when we did a lot of uh, a little seeds to put in the soil he brought it back to the classroom uh, and take care of that little uh, seed and grow this is really an opportunity for them to see and feel and touch and have a little science background. So in many ways, this is the missing link to help wellness become ingrained within the Portland Public Schools culture. Nutrition plays a crucial role in childhood development. We know that healthy eating uh, is directly correlated with improved learning outcomes. Spinach. You can take the spinach a little bit. Oh, lots of thumbs up, lots of thumbs in the middle. That's awesome. We also know that when we involve kids in the process of growing um, and preparing their own foods, they're more, they're more likely to make healthy decisions on their own, whether that be at home or in the school cafeteria. I'm fighting the potato! <laughs> Do you guys have anything else that you want think is important for people to know about garden? Um, it's fun. <laughs> no, you don't cut the people's zoom to live. So, um, I hope that you all enjoyed that compilation from this year so far and can kind of feel in your body the positive impact that this type of ed education um, has on kids in our community during such a traumatic year, but also without all the traumas. It's still also very, um, I think, good for everyone. I just want to say that we really believe that garden and food class encompasses so many of our collective goals, and I hope that we were able to show you that through this presentation tonight. Um, we believe that it's really one of the answers there are many answers, of course, but one of the answers to ingreening um, the vision that we all have for kids to have access to um, nutritious, sustainable, uh, culturally relevant,
and sustainable foods um, and all the tools that they need to make those decisions for themselves. So we think this is a really equitable way to incorporate that into the district. And we know that there are a lot of urgent needs and priorities um, and we are working to explore creative um, ways to sustain at least these two positions in the district. Um, and we hope to one day see this type of class, um, a garden and food science class operating next to art and music and PE and being something that's available to um, all elementary school students and hopefully beyond. So thank you all so much for watching this presentation and I'm going to um, turn it back over to Ailish and we will wrap up this meeting.